Praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you here today on what the world needs is Jesus. My friend, I trust that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And if you don't know Jesus, I urge you. Find you an altar. Amen. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to let the Lord Jesus Christ on the inside. Man, I'm going to tell you what. Ooh, ain't no telling what the Lord do. Now, he, he, the Holy Ghost just showed out the other night up there, didn't he? Amen. Up there at Larry, up there at Larry, Georgia. The Holy Ghost just showed out, son. I mean, he done. I mean, we broke some chains. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. If you need your chains broke, I know the man that can do it. His name's Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, Praise the Lord. It's going to take Jesus if you're going to make it to heaven. Listen, if you'd like to watch us, you can watch, watch us on YouTube. Go to W-O-L-W on YouTube. Uh, go to and just hunt up what the world needs of Jesus They're on W-O-L-W. Also, on uh, Facebook, we got a uh, we got a Facebook page, What the World Needs is Jesus. And uh, just got and on W-O-L-W, it's channels 183 uh, on Charter and Channel 8 on uh Farmers. So yes. remember this also. Just, just, but if you'll go to YouTube, if, you, if you're on interstate, I'm interstate. Man. <laughs> Woo, I tell you, I'm still so up. If, you go, if you're on the internet, it's almost like interstate, ain't it? <laughs> if you're on the internet, uh, just, just just go to YouTube, W-O-L-W, look up What the World Needs of Jesus, amen, or uh, go to the Facebook, go to Facebook, What the World Needs of Jesus. Also, Pentecostal Power Ministries has a Facebook page. Go to their Facebook page, Pentecostal Power Ministries. You can pretty much find out whatever you want to find out there about What the World Needs of Jesus, too. Uh, you go to Pentecostal Power Ministries, and uh, if you'd like to write to Pentecostal Power, Pentecostal Power Ministries is in Larry, Georgia. It's on Larry Down Road in Larry, Georgia, and you can't miss it if you ever turn on Larry Down Road. You can't miss it, and I'm not cussing either. You, you can't miss it if you turn on. Church is on. I guarantee you, just hunt up the one that's on fire, and you'll find it. Amen. Praise the Lord. But if you like to write to them, or or, or, or just write to them, and give them a just, just just give them a word, or maybe I don't know. You might want to send them some money on the building fund. Who knows? Praise the Lord. But anyway, you. Can can just write, just go, just write to PPM Pentecost Power Ministries. PPM PO Box 33, Larry, Georgia 30730. That's PPM PO Box 33, Larry, Georgia. Three zero seven three zero. Give them a give them a note. Amen. Write something to them. Tell them tell them, tell them, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, tell them you want the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen Praise the Lord. Tell them you heard it. Amen. On uh, what the world needs is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Also, uh, Brother Larry, assistant pastor, associate pastor over at Oasis Christian Center. If you're if you're anywhere in the, in the, in the Huntsville area, you can go there. Oasis Christian Center on North Parkway. Uh, Brother Don Craft is the uh, pastor. Uh, Brother uh, Larry Moss. Uh, Brother Larry Moss, associate pastor. Go be with them if you're anywhere in that area, and and, and tell them that tell them that you heard about it on what yeah, the world needs right. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Also, every last Tuesday night of the month uh, of the month. Yeah. Every last Tuesday night of the month, we have a girl. We call it the girly meeting. Uh, yeah. It don't mean it's a girly meeting. No. It means it's that girly. Yeah. Amen. But we call it the girly meeting. Amen. The Holy Ghost girly meeting. We have it every last Tuesday night uh, at 630. Uh, come and be with us there on that one. We'd love for you to come. We want to give you a special invitation to come and be with us. We've been seeing some great things happen. We started that with the auction people. Yeah. Amen. And it, it, it goes auction people. Some of them come, and boy, I mean, we just uh, we just have a good time in the Lord. Amen. We just we just sing, and and uh, we sing, testify, yes. preach, Amen. and sing, testify, and preach. Right. Just whatever the Lord lays on our hearts. Amen. That's what we do. And and if you can come and be with, us, that's at Sadie's Auction Barn, eleven sixty nine Highway seventy two East, Gurley, Alabama three five seven four eight. Sadie's Auction Barn, eleven sixty nine Highway seventy two East. Gurley, Alabama, 35748. If you'll punch that in that little thing that you got, 
you know, every time that you go somewhere, it's, it's called a, uh, what's that thing called, Brother Ricky? GPS. A GPS. If you punch that in on that GPS that you got, it'll take you right to the front yes, door. Will, Amen. You, you'll turn right in the driveway. Okay. That, little, that little woman on there, she'll say, uh, recalculate, recalculate, you passed it up. Recalculate, you'll have to, she'll have to turn you around, take you back down, and, and, and then she'll say, Turn in three seconds. That's right. Amen. That's Praise the Lord. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Punch that thing in and go on over and just have church. That's Let right. the Holy Ghost have his way. We got Brother Ricky. We got Brother Larry. And we got uh, Brother Steve. He's going to he's gonna uh, bring us on on our other program. Amen. But we got, and, and, and Brother Chris is with us today too. Amen. He's always with us. He's, he, he's one of our members. Amen. That's right. He's a member. He's a member at Pentecost Power Ministries and at What the World Needs is Jesus and Oasis and everywhere. Amen. He just goes with us. Everywhere. He just tags along with us everywhere. Amen. We try to make a preacher out of him. We might get. To, we might get to do that one of these days. Praise the Lord. But we just want God's will be done. Amen. We want to tell you about Jesus. We got some singing going on. We got uh, Sister Deborah Collins going to sing. I mean, uh, Point of Honor going to sing on this one and. Uh, Tradition's going to sing on this one. Also on our 30-minute one, we got Sister Deborah Collins going to sing and, and Tradition going to sing on it. So we want you to just sit back, enjoy the service, yes. and let the Holy Ghost of God just minister to you yes. and work with you because we got some great things to tell you about yes. of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one. He's the only one, and he's the only way that you're going to make it to heaven. Now I want you to worship with Sister, uh, well, Sister Point of Honor. Yes. I want you I want you to worship with Point of Honor as they sing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
God, what a, what a pleasure. What a, what a great time we're going to have today on What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. You know what? I'm glad to be a Christian today. I, I'm glad to be a, a child of the King today. I'm glad to know that if I died right now, that I'd be on my way to heaven, amen. I wouldn't be going to that awful place called hell. I'd be on my way to heaven, amen. If I took my last breath right now, I'd be on my way to heaven, glory to God. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You know what he was talking about? He said, let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry about this world. Don't worry about the things in this world, amen. If you believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you. Glory to God, he's gone to prepare a place for us. He's gone to prepare a special mansion just for you, amen. If you're saved today, he's, he's gone to prepare a place for you. He, he went and prepared a place for me. There's an empty mansion sitting in heaven. It's just waiting on me to get there, amen. It's empty and waiting on me to get there. And if you're saved today, there's one empty waiting on you, amen. If you're saved today, there's an empty mansion up there and it's custom built just for you, amen. It's ready for you, amen. So when we take our last breath down here. We're on our way to heaven, glory yeah. to God. No, no messing around, no this, that, or if you do this, or if you do that. Amen. When you take your last breath down here, you're on your way to heaven. You know what? There's also an alternative to that. Amen. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, if you don't know him, you're not headed there. Amen. If you don't know him, you're not headed there. You're headed to that awful place called hell. And nobody in this room wants you to go there. Amen. We all want you. That's what we're doing here. We're here to tell you about a man named Jesus yes. that came to this earth. He died on the cross for us. He took a whipping. He took beatings just for us. Amen. Just so that we could, just so that we could live here on this earth with the hope of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that we can know that we're going to heaven one day. You know what? I know in my heart. I know there's no there's no question about it. I know in my heart that I'm going to heaven one day. I, I'm following Jesus, amen, while I'm on this earth. And this is Jesus right here, this Bible. Amen. If you can read this Bible and follow what that Bible says, you're on your way to heaven. No doubt about it. Glory to God. I'm following Jesus all the way to heaven. Amen. Because I don't want to go to that awful place called hell. Amen. Where there's gnashing of teeth and burning. And the rich man was, he was, he was down there looking up and just wanted a little tip of water on Lazarus' finger. Just to cool his tongue. It was so hot down there. Matter of fact, he said, come send somebody to tell my brothers. Glory to God so that they won't come to this awful place. Amen. Tell, just go tell somebody to tell my brothers. Amen. You know what? We're telling you right now. Get your life together. Yes, Amen. Get a hold of Jesus. Yes, it don't matter what you're doing. I know people sit there and say, well, I can't do that. I can't go to church. I can't live that kind of life. And you're right. You can't. You can't do it. You can't, you can't even clean yourself up. Amen. You can't even get yourself cleaned up. But I know a man that can. Amen. I know somebody that can just clean you up, whip you up, get you up out of that miry clay, pull you up, clean you up, dust you off. And set you on a track on the straight and narrow, amen. Uh -huh. His name is Jesus, amen. And if you would get a hold of him today, yes. amen, get him in your heart. Forget all this other stuff. Get all these earth, other worldly things out of your heart and put Jesus in there. Yeah. Just, just fill yourself up. With just Come fill on. it up. Just fill up with Jesus, amen. I like what Brother Larry does. He, he does that illustration. Here's the devil. Here's Jesus. Hey Amen. As you fill it, as you fill yourself up with Jesus, there goes the devil. He goes out. Hey Amen. You get full of Jesus, the devil go out. There's no room in there for the devil when Jesus is in there. You know what the devil does? Whenever you just say the name of Jesus, he starts trembling. Hey Amen. He starts trembling. He starts getting nervous. He starts getting all upset because he knows the name of Jesus today. Amen. He knows the name of Jesus and what it can do. Amen. You know what? If, if, if you think there's a demon in your house, if you think there's a demon in your car, you just get in there and say, in the name of Jesus, it's got to go. Amen. And you know what? It's gone. It's got to go. It has to get out because you say the name of Jesus. That's the power of the name of Jesus. Amen. When you just say that name, 
That devil's got to go. You know what? Somebody can come and visit you and drop one off. They can come and visit you and drop a devil off right in your house. Amen. They can open the door and come in to see you and that devil jump right in your house. And they leave and leave it there. But you know what? You can also go around your house claiming the name of Jesus, claiming the blood of Jesus Christ. That devil's got to go. He can't stay there. He'll have to go no matter what. He, he, you, you know what? You don't even have to open the door for him because he's going to find a way out whenever you call on the name of Jesus. He'll get a way out of there because he's got to go when you say Jesus today. Amen. Glory to God. I'm excited to be a Christian. I'm excited to be here. I'm, I'm just so glad to get to tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. I I hope, I hope to God, if you don't know Jesus, I hope to God that you'll find you a place, find you an altar, find you something, and get a hold of Jesus. Get a hold of Jesus today, glory to God. Just get a hold of Jesus and let him take over your life because you know what? When he takes your life over... Everything starts to change, amen. Everything starts to turn around. Everything starts to turn to that, you know what, it may not change instantly. You may not get saved and then get up and your whole life be changed. But you know what, when you get saved, you get Jesus in your heart. You, can, you, you watch about two weeks later, about a month later, about three months later. You look back and you say, wow, boy, things are changing. You know what? You know what? That's because you put Jesus right in here. And you know what? When you put Jesus first, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all this other stuff will come. It'll just come to you. Amen. It'll come easy then. Amen. Seek ye first. Get a hold of God first. Put God first in whatever you're doing in your life, whatever's going on in your life. Put God first. If you're buying a car, put God first. Amen. If you're buying a house, put God first. Yes. If your children, you having trouble with your children, put God first. Right. If your finances are bad, put God first. Come on. It comes down to all of it. Amen. It's all of it. Everything that's going on in your life, you've got to put God first. Amen. And when you put God first, your life will change. Amen. Your whole life will change. Amen. Glory to God. You go through them storms and, and everything's going wrong and your boat's filling up with water. Come on. You know what? Your boat starts filling up with water and it gets fuller and fuller and fuller and, 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 and it's about to run over. Come on. You know what? We're all getting all scared and we're all worried. You know what? You know what? But Jesus is right there in the ship with you, amen. Jesus is right there with you. All you have to do is call on him. You know what them disciples done? They went down there and got him out of the hinder part of the ship. They went down there and got him and he was like, where's your faith, amen? You know what he done? He said, peace be still. And that, all that just stopped. Amen. All of it stopped. When your life's turned upside down and your boat's getting full of water, call on Jesus and let him say, peace be still. Glory to God and it'll change your life. It'll change you around. It'll change the things that you do. It'll change your want to. It'll change you from wanting to go out and do the wrong things. It'll change that around. You'll want to do the good things. You'll want to go to church. You won't get up and say, man, I, I, is this Sunday again? Is it time to go to church again? You know what? You'll get up ready to go. You'll be the first one up because you want to go to church. Amen. You won't have to get up and say, man, I just want to stay at home today. I just really don't feel like going. You, you get up and say, glory to God, I'm going to church. I don't care how I feel, good or bad. You know what? I felt I felt so bad sometimes started the church. I didn't even feel like getting in the car and time I got to church and got in there around my, around my Christian friends. It's like my whole world done changed. Glory to God, you get in there and get let the Holy Ghost of God get a hold of you, amen. And you get excited and you get you you forget all about feeling bad. You Boy, when you leave, you're just pumped up. And yeah. I, I, we leave out of our church sometimes. I'm just fired up, man. Yeah. Fired up going home. And that's all we talk about all the way home. How good the Holy Ghost of God is. Amen. That's good stuff to me, glory to God. I love the Lord today. I, I'm, just, I'm just excited to be a Christian. You know what? I can't understand why anybody wouldn't want that. Yeah. I can't understand why anybody wouldn't want the, 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 I can't understand why you wouldn't want to be a child of the king today. Amen. Lord God, I'm excited to be that person. I'm excited to be a child. Even when things get rough, even when things get bad, you think it's, you think it's over and done with. You know what? You just call on Jesus. 
And when you're lost, you don't have that to call on. When you're lost, you don't have Jesus to call on. Amen. When you're lost and you're down and out and you're laying there on your bed and you feel like the whole world's against you. You know what? I don't know what I would do if I didn't have Jesus to call on. Because I can call on Jesus. And, and you know what? I've been to that point before where I just lay down and I think, man. How can things get any worse? Yeah. Things are just so bad and you're laying there thinking about things and I just turn my mind to Jesus. Yeah. Turn your mind to Jesus. Yeah. Turn your mind and just start calling out on Jesus. Amen. Lord, I need help today. I need help today, Jesus. Yeah. I, I, I'm telling you what, I need to get a hold of Jesus today. And when you get a hold of Jesus and you're in that kind of turmoil... Jesus will start changing that heart for you. You know what? It's like he comes right down there and just massages your heart. He gets your heart turned around. He gets you feeling better. He gets you feeling better. And before you know it, you're up out of that bed and going, and you're ready to go again. Amen. That's the God I serve today. Amen. That's the Jesus I serve. Amen. He is ready and willing to help you when in the time of need. Amen. When you need help, he will be there. Amen. He don't look at that phone and say, oh, I know that number. I don't even want to hear from them. He don't do that, amen. He, you know what? You get, a, you get a main line with Jesus. When you get saved, you get a hold of that main line, glory to God. It's never down. The lines are never down when you get a hold of Jesus. Amen. He's always sitting there waiting and ready to answer that phone when you call, amen. He's not one of them that looks at it and says, well, I don't believe I, I, I know what they're going to do, and I don't even want to hear no whining and stuff today. Come on. That ain't him, amen. That's not him. But you know what? You call him up and start whining, he's liable to change your heart around. He's liable to change you around and get you out of that old whining mood, amen. Get you out of that old feeling sorry for yourself because we all do it. We all get to that feel sorry for ourselves time. But you know what? He'll turn you around. He'll turn you completely around and get you right out of that just by calling on his name, amen. Just by calling a hold, just, just by getting a hold of Jesus, yeah. Amen. He will turn your life right around. Amen. Yeah. And you know what? I can get up here and say that because he's done it for me. Amen. I can get up here and say that because one time I was lost. Amen. I was lost and undone without God. Amen. I was lost without God. That's the way some of you are today. Amen. You're lost without God. There's, there's no shame in that because we've all been lost. Amen. You know what the shame is? Is that you, when you know Jesus and you don't accept him. That's the shame, amen. When somebody's up here telling you about Jesus and you don't accept him. That's what the bad part is. So, so whatever you're doing right now, it, it don't matter to me what you're doing. If you're in the car, pull over to the side of the road, yeah, Lord of God. Hey, man, just do it right now. Just yeah. get a hold of God right now. Just ask him right there in your heart, Lord of God. Yeah. That's it, He's right there waiting. He's just waiting on somebody like you to call on him. Amen. Amen. Somebody to say, Jesus, I need help today. Jesus, I need you today. Amen. And he's waiting. He's yes. ready to answer that call. Yes. He's ready. All you got to do is call on him. Amen. Glory to God. And I love him today because I called on him and he answered my call. Amen. He answered whenever I said, Jesus, yep. Jesus, Glory. Jesus, I need some help. Amen. Come on, man. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. On time, Praise his name. He's an on time God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hey, man, if you got your Bibles, if you got your Bibles, turn to Acts. Turn to Acts, chapter 26. I want to read, I'm just going to read this one verse here, hey, man. In, 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 in chapter 26, Verse 28, then King Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You know what? You, you Almost. We can get up here and talk to you all day. And if you say almost you persuaded me to be a Christian, you, you're not going to make it, Amen. You're not going to make it into the. You're not going to make it into the rim of heaven, Amen. You're not going to make it to be with God today. Almost, King Agrippa said, "Almost thou persuadest me 
to be a Christian. Do you know what? Almost don't get us to heaven. Amen. Almost is not going to get a hold of Jesus. Almost is not going to get us nowhere. Except we're going to die and go to hell if we don't have Jesus. You know what? If that king didn't, if, it, if he went on and he didn't never get a hold of Jesus, that's what he done. Amen. He died and went to hell because if we don't get a hold of Jesus today, if we don't make Jesus our personal savior today, that's where we're going. Amen. And we're not coming back. You know what? We're all going to live forever. And we're going to live forever somewhere. Or it be heaven. There, you know what? There's only two places. There's heaven and hell. That's Amen. It, that's what the whole world is about from the beginning. It, it, it's good and evil. Yeah. Amen. Heaven and hell. Yeah. There, there's only two places to go. Amen. Whenever we take our last breath on earth, when these bodies die back out and go to the dirt, yeah. there's only two places. We're going to either we're going to go to heaven or we're going to go to hell. Yeah. Amen. And I'm going to heaven. Yeah. And I want you to go to heaven too today. Amen. I want you to be on your way to heaven yeah. just like we are today. Amen. Glory to God. And, and that king said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Amen. Almost. We could do a lot of things almost. Yeah. We can do a lot of things almost. You know what? We we yeah. Even at work, I mean, we can do a lot of things. We can almost get that done. But if we don't get it done, you know what? We don't get paid for it. Amen. If we don't get it done, we don't get paid for it. You know what? If we don't get a hold of Jesus, we don't collect that payday in the sky. Amen. If we don't get a hold of Jesus today, we don't get to collect our payday in heaven. You know what? If we don't get it done, we get our payday in hell because we didn't get it done. Amen. Glory to God. Sometimes we, we, we think that's just a little bit out there. We think, well, that, that heaven stuff and all that stuff, going to church and all that, that's just a little bit too much for me. That's a, just a little bit out there. But you know what? If you don't get a hold of Jesus, if you don't get him, Hey man, all that stuff might be out there, but it's going to be gone when Jesus comes back. It's going to be gone. You're not going to have that chance. You know what? I'd rather take the chance of it not being, even if it, even if I'm not right, what have you lost? Even if I'm not right, what have you lost? Hey man, live a good Christian life. There, there's nothing like it, amen. There's nothing, and you and you got to try it to do it, amen. You got to try it to know what it's like. And I guarantee you, I will guarantee you, when you get Jesus in your life, that'll be the way to go. You won't never go back, amen. When you truly get Jesus in your heart, you will never go back, amen. You won't want to go back to all that mess. You won't want to go back to the worldly stuff. You know, we, we all got to live, amen. We all got to live, and we got to have cars, and we got to have this and that, but you know what? We don't never put that stuff before God. We always make sure, we have to make sure that we put God first, amen. He said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Now this was Paul. Paul was over here. Amen. He done, he done been over there before a, a few of them Roman governors. He done been uh, before one of them and they'd put him in jail. Amen. And then that one went out. That governor went out and there was another one come in. His name was Festus. Amen. Amen. Old, old Festus, he couldn't find no fault with Paul either. They couldn't let them find no fault with him. But them Jews wanted him killed, amen. They wanted to kill old Paul. But them, them governors, they couldn't find no fault with him. Amen. They couldn't find no, no fault to, 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 to get him on, amen. So Agrippa told him, and then it comes to King Agrippa. Amen. After they, after he's done, went through a couple of these. Yeah. He come to King Agrippa, and King Agrippa said, "Thou art permitted to speak for thyself." Wow. He, yeah. King Agrippa, is giving him the chance, cause the Jews want him dead. King Agrippa is giving him the chance mm -hmm. to take up for himself, to make himself uh, worthy, to to get himself out of out of jail and get himself straightened out and get him out of jail. But you know what? He said, he said, you you can speak for yourself. Come on. No Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, O King Agrippa. 
I think myself happy. Amen. You know what? That's that's the Christian life I like. I think myself happy, O king. You do what to me, whatever you want to, but I'm happy because I serve the Lord. You know what? It don't matter what you do to old Paul. It don't matter what you do to us because we have that, we have that thing with Jesus, amen, that right. it don't matter what happens on this side of the world, yeah. it don't matter what happens, because we're going to heaven, amen, yeah. whatever happens, yeah. we got a better life ahead of us, amen, whatever happens, there's a better life ahead, amen, amen. glory to God, so you can't, you, you can't scare old Paul with that stuff, <laughs> amen, he said, I think myself happy, old King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee touching on all things where I'm accused of the Jews. Amen. Lord God, oh Paul was he he was it he he was exciting, wasn't he? He was he was excited. I love to read about old Paul because he don't care. Amen. He's ready to go, glory to God. He's ready to go. He so he 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 tells he says, I think myself happy, amen. And he begins to tell about he was a Pharisee. And yeah. he begins to tell. And then you know what? He starts telling old, old King Agrippa, he starts uh, telling about when he got saved, amen. He starts telling King Agrippa about when he was on his road to Damascus. Yeah, when, when Jesus, you know what? He was on his way to kill some more. He, was, he, was a, he said, I was the chief of sinners. Yes. That's what he said. I was the chief of sinners. Amen. And he had done got him some papers and he was on his way to kill some Christians because that's what he was doing. He was killing them. He was killing them Christians that followed Jesus. Amen. But you know what? On the way, on the way to Damascus, on the road to Damascus, that's where he was headed. Uh-huh. A light come from heaven. Come on, Amen. Right you know there. what? Some of us is on our way to Damascus right now. On, Amen. Man don't mean we got to be going to kill Christians, but we're just on that road to Damascus, headed for disaster, headed for destruction. We're all headed for destruction, amen? We're on that road to Damascus, and that light comes down. That light comes down and shines on us, glory to God. That light, whenever that light comes down and shines on us, you know what we got to do? We got to look up and accept that light, amen? We got to look up and accept Jesus. Come on. And put Jesus in your heart. Put Jesus first, amen. When that light comes on you, glory to God, don't... You know what? Sometimes you, you sit there and you feel a little prick at your heart, amen. That's Jesus. That's Jesus wanting to get a hold of you, wanting you to, wanting you to turn your life over, amen. You know what? When you when you listen to the preachers and, they th- and you're sitting there thinking, boy, it just seems like he's talking to me. You know what? I've been there, brother. I've been there because I've done the same thing. I've sat there and said, I just believe he's talking to me. Amen. You know what? Don't fight that. Yeah. Don't fight that feeling. Just go on and turn your life over to Jesus. Yeah. Just go on and let Jesus yeah. have his way. Glory to God, because you know what? Your, your life will be so much better. Amen. Your life will be so much better that you, 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 you look back and say, man, I, I should have done this years ago. I should have done this a long time ago. Amen. Because God is real. God live today and he wants to talk to you amen he wants to talk he's calling you right now amen he's calling on you right now amen glory to god if you don't know him just answer that call if that light's shining down on you come on brother bless god just just look up and take a hold of jesus today amen now worship with tradition as they bring us a song glory to god All through this world
Boy, I'm telling you what, that brother Ricky's son hot in a deep old stone January. Glory to God. Lord, I want to thank you for some good preaching up here. I want to thank you for some solid men of God. I want to thank you to men everywhere and women everywhere that's dedicated to the Lord. Yes. Listen, there's folks out there that we'll never hear them. We'll never know what their name is. We'll never know where they live or how they fare or how they get by until we get to heaven. You know, there's people out there that pray and they worship God and they're just oh, solid yeah. men and women of God across this land. You see, we think sometimes we watch the news and we hear this story and we hear that story and, and we begin to lose hope. We begin to lose faith. Let me tell you something. Don't lose your hope. No. Don't lose your faith. Right. There's men and women across this land and across right. this world just like you. Yeah. They're believing in God. They're hoping in God. They're living a godly life. You're not in it by yourself, my friend. You, there's people out there with you. They're praying for you and they don't even know you. Come See, on, we can brother. pray for the Christians. We can pray for the body of Christ. Yeah. We can pray for those that are struggling. Oh, I don't have to know what their name is. Oh, All I've got oh, to do is say, Lord, begin to bless your people. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, you know who's out there struggling. Yeah. You know who's got a broken heart and a busted up spirit. Yeah. Lord, reach down and touch them. Pick them up out of that miry clay, put them back together and send them back on that right road. They're out there and Lord, they need your touch. That's all we got to do. And then you know what else we can do? We can stand in the gap for them. Is there somebody out there that you know that just is broken and busted and all tore up and they won't go to church, don't feel like they can, they're full of shame and they're all broken and crying? Won't you get up, stand in the gap for them? See, you and I can go to the throne. I can go to the throne and I can say, Father, I've come here on behalf of my sister in Christ. She, here's what's happened, and you know what's happening, and this is what I want to done for him. You see, it's our turn and our time to be bold in these last days. It ain't time to sit in the corner sucking your thumb, going, oh no, a woe is me. That's the devil's job. The devil has one job when I get around him and when the word of God, strong men and women of faith get around him, he'll start shaking and he'll start trembling. And you know what? We can cause confusion to come into him. I told you before, he'll send two demons out to mess you up. The demons get close to you and they'll just stand there and they'll go, hey, what was we doing? Yeah, come on. Well, they don't go, I don't know. Well, I guess let's just go back home. Uh -huh. That's what praise and worship does. That's what reading the word does. That's what standing in your standing your ground does. That's what boldness does for you. See, Paul was a bold man. Had he not called and said, "Hey, I appeal to Caesar," they turned him loose two or three times. He said, I appeal to Caesar. Paul knew what he was doing. Yeah, he, he said, baby, if I say I appeal to Caesar, you've got to carry me to Rome. That's right. Yes. He wrote most of the New Testament in a prison. Yeah, yeah. Come on. I, I appreciate, brother. That makes me want to go back and read some more on Paul. Brother Ricky up here talking about it. Yeah. You know, that study about some of that man, what he did. Yeah. Shipwrecked, snake bit, yeah. left him for dead. He, you know what he did? He got up and dusted himself off and yeah. said, Jesus, I've got to go for Jesus. Yes. Maybe I'm telling you something right now. Get up and dust yourself off and say, Jesus, I've got to go for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Had it not been for Jesus, I'd stay in the bed. I'd stay in the chair. Come on, brother. No, no, no. Man loved me enough to lay his life down for me and put himself upon that cross and suffer all the shame he can do. He said, don't worry about them hating you. He said, baby, they hated me long before they hated yeah, you. Right. I'll tell you something. If they hated God, they'll hate me. I don't care if they hate me. I didn't come here to be hated. I come here to spread the word of God. I come here to spread the love of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I come here to run the devil off. I come here to get people born again, fill the spirit of the living God, let that love fall down on them, let the whole house fill up with the spirit of the living God. That's what I came here for. That's good, yes. What are you doing? What are you doing for God? What are you doing for the gospel? What are you doing for your local church? What are you doing for your pastor? If you're not doing anything, you need to get up and go do something. I, I preached this before. I feel like i got to tell you again. Go down and wash the windows. Go cut the grass. Run by and get a gallon of paint. Touch up the bathroom. Run by and buy some toilet paper. Get some, get some soap put in the kitchen. Yeah, Run by and get some paper plates and some. Who you think got to buy paper plates and forks and stuff when y'all have an eating meeting? Somebody's got to buy that stuff. 
Lord, we run to Walmart 40, 11 times a week. Surely we can pick up a can of beans for the pantry. Right. Uh -huh. You say, I can't do nothing. You can do everything for Jesus. Ooh, yeah, There's all kind of little stuff you can do, and nobody has to know. God sees everything. Yeah, you got to do it in secret, brother. One that counts, Go with me to John chapter, nine, uh, chapter 10. St. John chapter 10. Listen to this. Now, I told you before, these are them red letter words. That's our Savior talking. If I was you, I'd pay attention to what he's got to say. Yes, sir. Because, see, he never taught foolishness. I never heard anything about Jesus telling a joke. I never heard him about making fun of somebody. Nope. And, and making, doing that stuff's fine. I'm not saying you don't. <coughs> Excuse me. Come on, brother. But the only words I ever read in here that was in them red letter words, that's some serious stuff. Right. That's that stuff you better take to heart and get in you and you better hold on to it. Amen. And brother, you yeah. better meditate on that word day and night. And then when you meditate on that word day and night, you let it come in your spirit and dwell and latch itself in there. Let it intermingle, intertwine, and interlace. And when it does, let it come out of your mouth. Oh. And you fill it up with faith and you watch and see what my yeah. God will do. If you'll just get out of his way, he can yeah. do all kinds of things. Yeah. Right. Problem is, we get in God's way. We go, oh Lord, I got this. You ain't ever had nothing in your life, so you had your hand, you broke it. I told you what mankind does. Mankind run along in a buggy and he runs off a ditch and he got the range and he says, Lord, and the Lord reaches down and he takes the range of your life. He backs you up out of that ditch and he gets you to boogie down the road. Here's the problem. Two or three days later, we go, oh, I got it, Lord. We snatch the range out of his hand. Fifteen minutes, we're back in the ditch, Lord. Preaching right. Come on, preaching it, brother. I told you, you give mankind something about 15 minutes, have it tore all to pieces, no earthly idea how to put it back together. That's it. Call upon the name of the Lord for everything. Yes, you go, oh, I, I'll do this. I don't need the Lord. No, no, you just need him to breathe. That's all. That's right. All you do is need him to breathe to keep that heart beating oh. so you can work, so you can blink, so your blood can yes. flow through your body. That's all you need him for. You don't need him for nothing else. Uh, you don't need him for food and for clothing and shelter. But let me tell you something. You need Jesus Christ for everything in your life. Yep. There ain't one thing in your life that you'll never not need him for. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. I want to know, are you bound up? You're only bound up because you want to be bound up. That's the only reason we get bound up. That's the only reason we sin. That's the only reason we do cigarettes and all this other foolishness. Because we want to. You can't say, oh, I can't quit. You're a liar. Well, I, I am too. If I'm standing up here telling you that I'm going to run out this door and smoke a cigarette, let me tell you something. I went out that door and smoked a cigarette because I wanted to. That little old bitty nail didn't, it ain't not half the size of that pen. You mean tell me something that big's got that much control over you? Come on, brother. Ain't nothing got control over you unless you want it to. Right, right, come on. Don't stand there and tell me I can't this and I can't that. You ain't never done nothing until you got up and tried. Right, really. I can't do this. How, have you ever tried? No, you ain't ever tried. You just listen to somebody else running their mouth and you go, oh, I like that. I'll use that as an excuse. Uh -huh. You ain't got no more excuse. I'm up here telling you that that's sin and God will not have sin in his house. Jesus will not have sin. He's not a brother of sin. He's a brother of the faithful. Yeah. And if you want to quit, just throw them in the garbage and quit. That's right, Come on, brother. If you're looking at pornography, quit. Yeah, well, I can't. It draws me to pull your computer out and throw it in the garbage. Amen, throw it in the tub and run some water over it. Hit it, bust it with a hammer. Yeah. That's stop that pornography. That's oh, well, in my phone. Do the same with your phone. Throw the phone on the ground to match it. You want that phone to send you to hell? Come on, Come on brother. Which one do you want to do? Come on, brother. Yeah. Well. Now I'm telling you for your own benefit, listen, it's a cut and dry thing. God's drawn a line in the sand. You're either going to stand on the side that says Jesus Christ is the Lord. There ain't no other way to get to heaven. Or you're going to stand on the other side and go, oh, there's a multitude of ways of heaven. And how many times have you heard this? i got plenty of time. Maybe you don't know what you got. You'll be on a cold slab here in about 15 minutes. Come on. All right, well, exactly the truth. Now you either stand up and stand for righteousness or get out of the way and let somebody else do it. God ain't got time. We're in the last days. There's souls out there that needs to hear the gospel. There's a dying world out there that needs to hear the blood of Jesus. And it is our turn and our time to stand up and speak for righteousness. What is righteousness? It's whatever God calls it. It's in right standing with God. And let me tell you something. I don't care who passed a bill or who signed the law. If God says it's wrong, baby, it's wrong. And it'll always be wrong. Yes, 
Homosexuality is wrong. Two men getting married and two women getting married, it's wrong. Amen, brother. And you heard it here. My name's Larry Wayne Moss. I live in Gurley, Alabama. Come holler at me anytime. My number's on the screen. I'll still tell you it's wrong. That's right. Amen. I don't care. Lock me up. I'll preach to them in the jailhouse. Yeah. It's wrong. When God says it's wrong, baby, it's wrong. It's wrong to steal, kill. It's wrong to destroy people's property. It's wrong to cut it. It's wrong. Yeah. It's wrong to have idols in your house. Amen. Brother Ricky's talking a minute ago about leaving them demons. Let me tell you something. You, should, now, you, may, you may think I'm crazy and I really don't care, but you better watch about things that you bring in your house. Right. People buy these dragons and all these oddball paintings and pictures and they hang them up. If it's not of God, it's demonic. That's right. Come on, and there can very well be spirits attached to it and cause all kind of uh, mayhem and havoc in your home and in your life. And you go, I don't know what's going on. Come on. Uh -huh. Come on. Clean your house up. Come on, yeah. brother. If it's of the devil, throw it in the trash and burn it. Don't give it to somebody. Burn it. Yeah, man. We'll get there in a minute. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. It's good preaching. Good, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Ooh, come on. Good. I, I'll stop right there just a minute. Look here. There's all kind of stuff out there that people want to do other than follow Jesus. On, See, here's the problem. They know that when they begin to follow the Lord, they begin to go to church, yeah. there's principles and there's discipline that must be applied. When I follow Jesus, I, I've got to follow this book. If I, can, if I truly say I'm a Christian and I'm a follower of Christ, that means I follow the guidelines set forth and the principles set forth by the blood on the cross. Come on, brother. But there's some out there that go, I don't want to live that way. Hey, guess where you're headed? I'll not see you after this life. I'll see my brothers and my sisters in Christ in heaven. Guess where you and your brothers and sisters are going to be? The Bible says you are of your father, the devil. Don't stand there and tell me God's your father and you're running over here doing all kinds of stuff. You're a liar. God's not your father. The devil is your father. If you try to, get, and they're out there, they take these little crystals and they sit around in, in a circle and they hold hands and they chant and all this kind of stuff. You know, I'd love to go there and go, okay. What's happening now? What did that crystal do for you? And if they're honest, they'll say nothing. Right. If they went over here and, and these Muslims and they do these, these uh, uh, daily prayers when they call to prayer, it's the same prayer over and over. I want to ask you a question. What has that prayer done for you? Come on, nothing. How can prayer of that nature do anything for you when you're praying to a dead idol? Amen. You'll not make it. It's not going to happen. Listen, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only true one living God. You'll not make it. If you try to get up there, the Bible just plainly said them red-lettered words, you're a thief and a robber. Yes. <coughs> Last time I checked, the Bible said wouldn't be no thieves and robbers in heaven. That's right. I believe it said that in there. You yes. dig in there and see. If you see a lot of things I say, if you'll start in Genesis and start reading to the right, you'll find them. But baby, ain't no telling what you're gonna find in between. Yeah, that's right. And I'll tell you what you'll find, though, you'll find this one word called salvation. Yeah, right, brother. You'll begin to read this Bible. It'll begin, to, you know, the first thing it'll reveal two things. The first thing it'll begin to reveal is the Son, which is Jesus. Right. The second thing it'll begin to reveal is guess what? It'll begin to reveal you. Yeah, right, brother. Behold a man that looks at his natural face in the glass in the mirror. That's right. You know, we look in the mirror, it won't look too long because when you start looking in the mirror too long, the real you will show up. That's right. We'll look in there, we'll look at our cheeks and our eyes and our hair and our ears and our neck line oh, and our beard and all that, but we won't look at our eye to eye. Yeah. But baby, when you get in the mirror and you start looking eye to eye, the real you will show up and you go, wait a minute, I don't like it. Uh, yeah, oh, my wife's called me, we got to go. Yeah, come on, yeah. come on. If you try to get into heaven any other way, you are a thief and you are a robber. There you go. Amen. But he that, listen to this though, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name yes. and leadeth them. I, I want to ask you today, does the real shepherd, Jesus Christ, does he know your name? Amen. Amen. Huh? 
Is he calling you out? Is he calling Bob and Robert and Jerry and Estelle? Is he, is he calling you by name? If he's not calling you by name, you better run and introduce yourself right quick. It won't take just a few seconds. Listen to, listen to this. Let me read this again. This is just so important. I love, read, I love the whole Bible. Yeah. I really love to pay attention to what Jesus said. To him the porter, this is uh, John chapter 10, verse 3. To him the porter opened, sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, leads them out. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. Why do they follow him? For they know his voice. Let me ask you. Do you know the voice of Jesus? Do you know that in it? You know, people talk about that still, small voice because that's true. God's not going to holler at you. He's not going to push you down. He's not going to hover over you like some type of spirit and make you all afraid. And, and all. He's not, he doesn't do that. No, he don't. My God's a gentleman. Yes, the is. Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Jesus yes. is a gentleman. Amen. He will call upon you. He will not he grab you and shake you. No. I, you know, he won't get up there and force you and go, you better accept me or. Yeah, There's on. a lot of other religions that do that. There's a lot of other cults out there that do that. There's a lot of people out there that they say all manner of foolishness. And you know what gets me? Is these sheep that are lost, they listen to them. And I'm talking about people with more degrees than a thermometer. I'm talking about learned men and women, been to college. Yeah. Yeah. They get around these people that are cult leaders, and they get up there and they, they say, they take the gospel and did like, Jesus, yeah. like the devil did, and they twist it just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah. You don't have to blow it out of proportion. No. Just, just as much as this piece of paper, the thin sheet of paper. Yeah. All you got to twist it just a little bit. They get them tickling ears and they go, boy, I like that. Yeah. How much money do you need? But they pull that check out, sorry, they get to writing. And that old guy up on stage, he's thinking in his mind, he said, got him. Y'all yeah. <laughs> yeah, just paid for my Mercedes. Yeah. I'm, I'm fixing to go to the Riviera. While y'all run home and, and just talk about all how good it was. Yeah. You're going to be talking like that one day and then the Lord's going to show up and you're going to be left here and all them Christians are going to be gone and you're going to go, what, what happened? What happened? And then they'll get up and they'll tell you it was some alien come got them. It was some kind of whatever come got them. I told you all there was aliens. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If there's aliens out there, they'll follow Jesus Christ or they right. won't go to heaven either. That's right. Amen. I don't, uh, listen, I don't know if there's life out there or not. Frank, frankly, I don't care. I didn't cut, God didn't put me on this earth to figure out life 100 million light years from here. Right. Come on. Come God put me on earth, preach the gospel, and that's, I'm doing my job. Amen. But like I told you, if there's aliens out there, they'll bow the knee to Jesus and they'll accept Jesus as their Savior right. and they'll go to heaven or they won't. Right. This gospel is not just for this earth. No, this gospel is a universal message to every living creature that ever was uh -huh. and ever will be. Right, my God has all the power and all the authority. Yes. There ain't nobody like unto my God. There ain't nobody like, who can stand up against God and even think for one minute that they can win. Have you lost your mind? That'd be like me trying to go with this, uh, um, this wrestling, this WWE. One of the big old 400 pound men I get in the ring. What do I look like think I'm going to win against him? Come on, come on. That man crushed me. Yep. I wouldn't even be, I'd be less than an appetizer for him. Yeah. I'd be like a half a bowl of soup. He wouldn't eat me and he'd still be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Hey, it's good, Larry. Come on. Verse 5, and a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. What voices are you listening to? Yes. I want to know today what's guiding your life every day. When you get up, why do you get out of bed? Yeah. And don't just give me, oh, I've got bills to pay. And I, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. We all got bills to pay. Even rich people got bills to pay. Poor people have bills to pay. That's a common thing. Why do you get out of bed? What is your reason for getting out of bed? Is it for your family to provide for them? Is it to serve a living God? Is it to serve a dead God? Do you owe your soul to the company store? Come on, brother. Why do you get out of bed every day? What do you smile at? What do you laugh at? What, what's your plane or your train of thought? What do you think about in your downtime? Come on. Guys, I'm not trying to be mean to you, and I'm not trying to talk down to you. Come what on. I'm trying to do is to get you to open up and your, open your eyes up, open your mind up, open your spirit up to what's going on. Come on. 
Guys, there's a living God loves us, not mad at us no matter what. He, listen, the only, you know what Jesus wants? He don't want your car, your house. He can care less about that. That's right, brother. He wants you. Yeah. Right. He loves you more than anything in this universe. Right, loves you more than the universe. Yeah. If you think he created, listen, he created the universe, flung the stars into place. The Bible says he named them. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, you're more important to him than all them stars. Yeah. Right. He set the universe in perfect working order, just like it is right now. The galaxy and the universe that we live in, with all these planets, the sun, Mercury, Venus, and all that, everything works at a perfectly, accurately timed intervals just for us. That's right, right. He didn't do it for anything. He don't need that. No. What's God need with the universe? Come on. What? He don't need a sun. He's got a sun. Hello. Amen. Hello. He said everything in order just for you. That's all. See it. You know what? I told you. You're at the forefront of God right here. The most powerful being ever. Creator of everything. Ever was. Ever wills. Ever is. And ever will be. That's right. You're right here. You're at the forefront of his thoughts constantly. Amen. And he's looking down. He said today's a day. Call upon my son. Come live with us. Right. Yeah. I got a house. Got plenty of room. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Right. You can go fishing, you can praise God, you can paint, you can praise the worship, it don't matter. Come on. Yes. You can go fishing. You just don't go fishing on Sunday morning, go to church. Amen. Church is over, go fishing. That's right. Guys, I love you. I got to get out of here. Listen, call upon Jesus. Don't, yeah. be, don't be ashamed of him. He's not ashamed of you. Yeah. That's right. If you're ashamed of him, yeah. he'll be ashamed of you. Amen. On, he'll get to heaven. He'll be standing there next to God. He'll say, Father, I don't know who they are. That's right. Guys, I love you. Call upon the name of the Lord and let him change your life. Bye. And when the way gets rough and rocky, just look up and you can see what the world